Hey, welcome back. Another day, another vlog. Great to have you back on the channel. Oh, that was a bit close. <laughs> Good to see you. Nice, lovely you done with your hair. Um, hope you're all well on this Tuesday. It's an earlier one today because I've got to go to a house auction. I'm trying to find a house on the Sunshine Coast it is a little tricky at the moment. It's gone bunter all through Queensland. The prices are crazy. Good for selling our other house, but tricky to when we're going to buy one. So sort of you win and then you lose. So anyway, another fight. We put an offer in the other day for another one and no luck on that. And now you just can keep playing the game. So fingers crossed, might have a house by the end of the day, which might be cool. So fingers crossed on that one. Um, editing again last night, I did a fair bit of stuff yesterday afternoon. Um, I did, I tried a new little trick, which I got off PH Learn. He does some Photoshop training techniques on YouTube. So go and check him if you're into, if you want to do stuff for YouTube and stuff, I'll try and show you how to do it down the track um, when I can, but it's for Insta doing panos. Obviously I do a lot of panos, doing landscape stuff, and then trying to get them Insta, into Instagram so you can see them and get the uh, full effect of them. It used to be a little bit of a pain. I'd have to guess and try and line up where I want to do it. Um, well, it's actually a really simple technique, which I got off PH Learn channel and really, really easy. And uses Photoshop to basically slice uh, predetermined uh, lines, basically, and it cuts it up perfectly. And then you can put it into Insta into that, so it's smooth. You now you get a smooth flow. Um, so that was pretty cool. So. I uh, did a bit of playing around with that yesterday after I edited one of my photos and I edited a ton of other photos. So I think I'm up to about 13 or 14 that I've actually edited for day four. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but it generally can take me half an hour to 45 minutes to play around and play with each image. I've got 100, 120 or something photos to get through, so I've still got a lot of photography work Obviously, I'm not going to get too much done this afternoon. Probably go to bed another hour's so worth of editing I can play around with now. And then I'll be heading off and then do some more tomorrow. And then Thursday, I've got my brother's birthday, so I won't be able to do anything on Thursday night. But trying to get it done, uh, the, as always, the photos, I don't want to rush because I want to get them right because once they're done, they're done. But uh, it's always a little tricky to get them in spot the dog so but that's the most important thing that's what i'm here for from my photography the tech and everything else is a little bit of fun and some fun stuff to help these guys out as much as i possibly can and uh yeah yeah cool um my mask did rock up uh yesterday as well now i don't know if you've ever seen these it was on the teespring account which i've sort of is still available and still there if you look at the old link you can get a teespring but a 34 media mask. So gonna be using them uh, today at the auction because Queensland's obviously gone full mask statewide. It's in a three day lockdown in Brisbane, which is not fun. Uh, Barra Classic's coming up next month. I am sweating bullets on that. That is a huge part of my year. It's the whole reason this channel started was from the Barra Classic uh, filming our fishing. It's my biggest exciting most fun thing i do every year now uh once you have two of my best mates and i'm really looking forward to this year because of the rain the river the river's really good it's clean it's got heaps of water going through it so it's going to be a good chance to actually catch some fish and show you guys the amazing barramundi and amazing fishing in the northern territory so uh let's hope this three-day lockdown clears it out they sort out what's going what what went wrong who went wrong how it went wrong uh, they're still. They're, I think that's mainly what they're trying to sort out and lock it down and see who's got it and how they've got it. Uh, hopefully after those three days, that'll sort out that sort of scenario and then we'll go back to normal and back and we're going to couple, I still got a couple of weeks, I think 15, 16 days before I have to leave. So it should be pretty good in that regard. So fingers crossed, knock on wood, uh, it all goes good. I would be absolutely devastated, especially since I've taken on the holidays off to do this, uh, yeah, it would break my heart, very much so, and I don't want that. So please, 
please, COVID, go away. Just go away. Um, and I've got a heap of Astro stuff I want to do while I'm at the Daily, which is just a big black zone, so it'll be just amazing. Uh, yeah, there's so much I want to do. Crocodile, I've well, got the long lens now, so I can get in and get those crocs, big crocs, and it has some big crocs there, some amazing hawks and eagles nests as well. So there's heaps of stuff I want to do, so I'm super pumped, and I, I'm itching to get up there. Can't wait. Um, so yeah, other than that, got a, got a lot of editing to do, Still on those photos, but day four is looking super, super cool. <clears throat> Some of the ones I've done at Elephant Bay, uh, Elephant Rocks, uh, at Grant near Green's Pool is just amazing and just looking spectacular. So there's going to be some epic photos out of this, and I'm really, really pumped. It's what I wanted and what I got, and the hard work and the sacrifices paid off, like it does always in anything you do in life. If you're willing to put in the go out and spend a freezing cold night in the middle of nowhere by yourself, uh, chances are you're going to get that shot that you're after. And I've got a, I think I've got a, at least a couple good ones that are like definitely going up on the website, definitely going to be like things that will really, really pop. So I hope you really enjoy them when they do come out. So hopefully by the weekend I'll have it all sorted, but we're looking pretty good, looking pretty good at the moment. So all things keep going that way, we should be good. Um, Tech news, not really a cleaning channel, but we I'm always interested in new tech. Um, and I thought I'd show you this one. You're probably thinking, why is a vacuum on the thumbnail? Uh, well, it's Dyson's new V15. Now, if you're in Australia, don't go to the Australian side because for some, like most things in Australia, uh, the big companies don't really give a shit about Australia. Uh, which is starting to get really, really annoying, especially that I, when I go to look at the tech news, you see it on the Asian sites, you see it on the American sites and the European sites, and you come to Australia and there's nothing there. And you've got to wait sometimes six months before it even gets to Australia, which is just ridiculous. Um, in an era where the internet is everything, it's a global internet. Everyone can go anywhere they want and shop wherever they want. There's back doors to everything. I can shop in America if I want and get it shipped there and then shipped here. Uh, there's always ways around stuff. To have companies be either naive or just disrespectful, disrespectful by not giving us those options in Australia, it's pretty weird and yeah, d disappointing. I think I said it in a survey because they asked me for a survey at the end of the Dyson thing, and I said, it's, look, you're playing this like fools, like, don't, if you're silly enough to think that people are looking on the internet, of all things, we're shopping online on a website, if you don't think we're going to look somewhere else to look for something, you're absolutely crazy, and you're, you're saying that you can't even buy it in Australia, but I can buy it in America, like, it's crazy, but anyway, that's my rant about websites, and that's not just to, towards Dyson, that's a lot of companies. Australia is one of the worst places for online shopping. They generally don't have, Australian companies don't have prices, they won't put a price up, and uh, it's, they won't show you half the products that they sell overseas for whatever reason. Uh, and it's really annoying, really annoying. It's one of my pet hates with the internet, well, with Australia. Customer service in Australia is terrible. Uh, it, buying stuff with the internet in Australia is worse, probably worse than the customer service because there are some good good shops out there but there's a lot of terrible customer service uh, issues a hey, Telstra number one on the platform for most hated companies I hate uh, can't stand them but uh, yeah a little bit weird so I did I threw it back at the Dyson It'd be interesting to see if they come back to me and say look we apologize or anything like that sometimes it's a bit of an eye opener for them uh, sometimes they just don't care and ignore you generally most times they ignore you the only ones that generally I've had good replies to about any sort of negative feedback is Amex, which are awesome with their customer service and a couple of others. eBay's really good, PayPal's really good. So there's a few companies that do their customer service and generally they're overseas companies, they're not Australian. So that's always funny to see. Anyway, I digress. This thing is pretty cool. Vacuum on the front, thumbnail, what the hell's a vacuum here? This is a cleaning channel, it's not a cleaning channel. Uh, it's on there for one reason, and it look, it uses a green laser to detect dust particles 
and make sure you've sucked up all the bad stuff off your floor of your house. Um, it's got a piezo sensor in there that counts and measures the size of all these dust particles that you're picking up. It'll adjust, automatically adjust the power of the vacuum. So if it's got a lot of big stuff coming, it'll put a or if it's got a little, little stuff, it'll, it adjusts it. So it's like a fully digital, crazy uh, health system vacuum, I guess you call it. Something on like those lines. <laughs> but I thought it was pretty cool. Now it's got an LED display on the back of it. Shows you what particles, what size you picked up, if it's good or bad or whatever, and if you have, what percentage of each one it is. So you can get a full diagnosis of what sort of crap's in your house when you're vacuuming. So if you get a lot of dog hair and stuff, I guess it'll say, look, you get a lot of dog hair, blah, blah, blah. Or some might be some bad stuff that it measures and goes, oh, hey. But just to, I guess it gives you a good idea of what's around your house to give you that good cleaning habits, which is always good. Um, I like to be thinking of myself as, actually, probably people at work will call me massively OCD. Um, I'm a little bit in that regards. I do like a clean spot. Uh, everything has a place, everything in its place used to be in one of the warehouses I run. I think it's because I've run a few warehouses, so I get a little bit pedantic. <laughs> now, um, yeah, so LED display on the back of this bad boy. It's got most, it's one of the most powerful vacuums, all the stuff, but this green laser runs around in front of you and you can see the dust more clearly. It'll pick it up, de detects it, ups the power. You get the drift. Now, um, in the US, it's already on sale, 700 bucks, so about $1,000 Australian, which is basically cheaper than what the current V11 model costs in Australia, and I reckon that's why you can't get it in Australia, because they're gonna, if they're selling it there for 700, and they're gonna sell it here for 1500, well then you just buy it on the internet from America and then ship it to yourself and save yourself five, 600 bucks. That's the only thing, theory I could think of. But uh, look, it's not about the actual product uh, thing, but great little tech piece. Uh, Dyson really good at doing everything from hair dryers, blow dryers to vacuums. They've really changed the game. He's done an amazing job in his career. Um, pretty cool to see and something different. I guess how much, what's the next step in vacuums? I guess this is it and it's good to see something different. Pretty funky and pretty wild. Now, uh, a few R5, R6, 1DX users, also the 7200 and the 100 to 500 mil lenses. There's a firmware update, uh, finally it's come out uh, for Canon. Unfortunately, it wasn't probably what a lot of people would have thought. Now for the R6 and 1DX Mark III users, they might be a little bit disappointed. They didn't get the C-Log 3. Uh, the R5 gets it, that's the only one. Pretty much other than that, nothing just like little minor repairs and bits and pieces. And the only other thing was electronic full manual focus uh, was that one that went through the lenses and the other two bodies as well as a getting carried over to the whole series for the update. So yeah, C-Log is in the R5, that's good. C-Log 3 is supposed to be the best. Um, you're paying, well actually the most expensive camera, the 1DX Mark III doesn't get that tech that only goes to the R5. That's the only thing I feel a little bit strange. You get $11,000 camera versus a $7,000 camera. The $11,000 camera doesn't get the update, doesn't get the C-Log, which is, you'd have to be feel a little bit short, short, uh, short pocketed there, I guess. So what do they call it? Short, short shafted, just shafted. <laughs> but yeah, and that's it. So that's out now. If you do have one of those cameras or lenses, you can update it. Um, there's just minor fixes. I didn't want to go into them, they're just little bits and pieces, really nothing important. But the main one was that C-Log 3 for the R5 and that electronic, full-time electronic manual focus for the others. So uh, that's, I guess, any firmware update's good. If you've got one of those, go update it, get it fixed, uh, and then you're always good to go, or you should be anyway. Now, Tesla, there's new Tesla talk about the new Teslas. They will have no physical lever for the gears, no button, no nothing. So basically what they do, they use AI. Uh, it was pretty interesting watching Lou later and uh, Willie Do talk about it on their podcast. Um, the fact that this AI is there to, the car will know where you are. In, so if you're in a car park, 
it not uses maps and everything. It can use its sensors around it. So if there's cars in front of you, behind you, uh, or to front of you and to the side of you, well, you know you can only go in reverse. So it'll only let you drive in reverse. Does that make sense? So just, just imagine this is your car, you have a car here, car in front of you, car there, you're in a car park, you need to reverse out to go. Well, you don't have to select a gear, it will know that you can only go in reverse. So it will, when you just put your accelerator down, it'll just go in reverse. And then you can drive off. So it uses sensors, maps, AI, to know your area, know your normal routes, know where you normally park, such and such and such, to develop a system and let you know what you can and can't do. It's gonna be a bit weird. Uh, you can override the system. You have to go into the main screen and there's a slide bar that'll let you go from forward to reverse to override it, to select a forward or reverse. Um, but yeah, it's coming in all the new Teslas. Uh, it'd probably be a firmware update for the others. I'm assuming they've probably still got the physical levers at the moment, but uh, yeah, the future, a little bit weird in that regards. I'll look, I'll be happy. I think I've said it many times, just go full autonomous. So I'm not responsible, so I can get in the thing, say, take me home and let me go home and I can crack a beer and have a beer on the way home after work. That is the Australian's perfect car. Ute, whatever, I don't care. Uh, I'm at that age now where I don't really need to go out and do burnouts and that. I've done all that. That's for the young kids. Um, give me a car that I can tell it to go to the shops. I can go to the shops, crack a beer, and not worry about losing my license. It's, if any, the, anything happens, it's the car's fault. Sue Tesla, don't talk to me, I'm out. <laughs> um, but look, pretty cool and something different again. I like every now and again these little funky stuff and that's gonna be weird. The first time you get in a car at a car park and just go, get with your pedal and, get, eh, 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 and it just does exactly what you need it to do. It'll be like, wow, oh my God. And then last but not least, uh, Samsung, holy bundy. Uh, talk about RAM, I think the Mac, Pro when that came out, is it like you could go up to 1.5 terabytes of RAM. Uh, that's insane. But Samsung, no, don't mess with Samsung. They've got you normally your RAM RAM cartridges or your or your little RAM things that you whack into your computer. Your computer. Well, they've now developed a one unit S, uh, DDR5 speeds up to 7,200 megabytes a second. So just ridiculously fast that DDR5. Very very good. This is 512 gig on the one card. One card, so every card you put in, if you've got five, six, eight slots, 512 gig, realistically, if you've got, I guess, eight slots or six slots, there's three terabyte of RAM. RAM, not storage, RAM, insane. I think the Mac, my Mac's got, what did I get? I think I got the, 32 meg? No, I think it went 64 meg. That's why it cost me a fortune. 64 meg of RAM on this, and it's crazy. 64. Uh, now you put that up to 512. Insane. Samsung, just crazy. Obviously, no price or anything. It's just, just been released, just announced. Uh, but a wild bit of tech, and it's just going to get faster and faster and faster. We know what the M1s do. Uh, how crazy they are, the future, the future is just, it, the, trying to keep up is just ridiculous. Uh, yeah, pretty wild. That's a lot to take in, 512 on one thing. That's a lot of grunt. And that's about it. I will see you all again tomorrow. Uh, hope you have a fantastic Tuesday. Thanks for stopping by. Wherever you're over from the podcast, over from Facebook, Instagram, wherever you're from, wherever you've, if you've just subscribed to the channel, Thank you for subscribing. I do love having a chat to you every day during the week. And I will see you all again soon. Stay safe and stay happy. Beautiful weather today. But if you're going that way, that way, I'll catch you tomorrow. Peace.